This conference will now be recorded. So in the previous session, we have discussed about collections and we have discussed what exactly a collection and what is a use, how the collections are different from arrays and what drawbacks are the limitations that we have in arrays how these limitations will overcome with the help of collections we have discussed in the previous session and what kind of elements the collection can hold inside the and what are the various collection classes that we have in salesforce we have discussed in the previous session so we have identified that apex offers three collection classes as part of Apex programming, we have three collection classes available which we can use to store a group of elements of both homogeneous and heterogeneous. That means we can store both similar type of elements and dissimilar type of elements we can mix together inside a collection. As part of these collections, we have three collection classes available first one list collection second one set collection third one map collection now so first let's see what is this list collection and how can we use the list list collection and what kind of elements list collection can store and how it will work internally how it will manage the elements in the list collection how to define a list collection in Apex programming and how to manage the elements by using some ready-made methods. So what methods that we have in this list collection class, how to use them, we'll see practically today. Now, let's see the list collection class. Now, so list is a collection class. List is one of the collection class given by Apex programming by default. By using this list collection, we can hold a group of elements. Okay, we can hold a group of elements inside this list collection. Those elements may be same data type elements or those may be different types of elements also. That means list collection allows us to store both primitive type of elements and non-primitive. That means here it may primitive type of elements, yes, subject type of elements also. We can store collection type of elements also, apex type of elements also, user different types of elements also. All these type of elements we can mix together inside the list collection. So list is a collection class which is supposed to store both okay because premium homogeneous and the heterogeneous elements also inside this now upon storing these elements inside this list collection how it will work internally basically list is an ordered collection list is an ordered collection what do you mean by this ordered collection what do you mean by unordered collection which you will see now for example, let me explain. For example, I'm storing the element inside my collection first. This is the first element I want to store inside my collection, Apex. Whenever I'm adding this element, the element will be stored inside my collection now. The element will be getting stored. This is the first element we have added. Whenever it is storing the element inside the collection, for each element it allocates index position starting from zero. 
okay in list collection also upon adding the new element to the collection it will be allocating a unique identification number for each element that is called as index position which always starts from zero so the first element will be having the element index position zero now i'm adding one more element some welcome whenever i'm adding one more element now this element will be available as it is along with this element it will be adding welcome it will store that second element also inside my collection which is having the index position one i'm adding an element with the name some bangalore whenever i'm adding this element bangalore this element also will be placing inside my collection where at the end of the collection here it will add this element it will have the index position 2 next i'm adding the element some india whenever i'm adding this element india india will be adding at the end of this location here so india will be getting added which will be having the index position 3 now i am adding the element some bangalore already we have added this element now i am adding one more time will it be accepting or not yes it will accept as it is now it will add the element again bangalore which will be having the index position 4 now that means what when coming to the list collection list is an ordered collection what do you mean by ordered collection what are the order we have added the elements in the same order elements will be available inside the collection that means your insertion order actual elements order both are exactly same okay now first i have added apex then welcome then bangalore when you go to this we have apex and then welcome and then bangalore and then we have added india and the bangalore so those elements are also available so list is an ordered collection which allows us to store both homogeneous elements and heterogeneous elements inside the collection that means list collection will preserve the insertion order preserving means what saving it will be remembering the insertion order in what order the elements has been added it will remember that based on the order of adding the elements in the same order elements will be present inside your collection so your insertion order actual elements order both will be exactly same because as part of this list collection it is purely supporting the insertion order it's a ordered collection so as part of ordered collection elements will be available inside the collection in the same order in which they were inserted now by using this list collection we can store same data type elements also different data type elements also the facility is available here now in this case you can raise a question sir what type of elements we can store only primitive data type of elements we can store a subject data type of elements can we mix all these two yes inside your list collection we can store primitive type of elements primitive means what integer string double decimal like that yes subject means what account contact lead position like that so we can able to store primitive type of elements inside your collection yes subject type of elements also collection type of elements also that means in one list collection we can store another list collection also previously we have discussed nested if condition that means in one if condition we can add another if condition in while loop we can use another while loop in one for loop we can use another for loop like the similar way in one list collection we can store another list collection also that means nested list collections also we can store so inside this list collection we can store primitive type of elements yes subject type of elements and then collection type of elements apex type of elements also 
Apex type means what? Salesforce is providing so many ready-made classes. Those ready-made class type of elements also we can store. And then we can store user different types of elements also. User different types means what? We have prepared our own classes, like as employee helper, student helper, products helper, customer helper. We have prepared so many classes. Those class type of elements also we can store inside your collection. So all these are five types of elements we can store inside a collection. So list collection supports to store primitive type of elements, yes subject type of elements, collection type of elements, apex type of elements, and user different types of elements also. All these types of elements we can store inside my list collection. Now. Whenever I'm storing the elements inside my list collection, list collection is going to be assigning an index position for each and every element. For every element, list collection will assign an index position which always starts from zero. That means what each element can be recognized based on index position. If you want to deal with the elements, we can use the help of index position. Based on the index position, we can perform some operations on that respective elements. The facility is available. Next, whenever I'm storing the elements inside this list collection, will the list collection will accept the duplicate elements or not? Yes. When you observe this collection here, we are having Bangalore here also Bangalore. So two times the element Bangalore has been placed. That means list collection will supports to store duplicate elements also. Duplicate elements can be acceptable in such a list collection. This is the fundamental behavior of list collection. Please remember this point here. When moving forward in the other collection classes, okay, other collection classes will don't support these duplicates. Okay, now next one. Whenever I'm storing these elements inside my collection, if you keep on adding the elements, automatically the size will be keep on expanding automatically. If you are removing some elements in future, automatically the collection size will be getting decreased. That means what? Collections are purely supporting dynamic memory allocation. Collections purely supports dynamic memory allocation so that collection size can grow, collection size can shrink also at one time. If you keep on adding some new element, automatically collection size will be getting expanded. In future, if you're removing some elements from the collection, size will be getting decreased automatically by default. So there is no concept of memory wastage. We can utilize the memory very, very efficiently with the help of this list collection class. Okay, now, so now here in this case, as part of this list collection class, how to manage the elements? Do we have any ready-made methods available? Yes, we have a group of instanced methods are available. In this list class, we have some group of instanced methods are available, which we can use to manage the elements. If you want to add some new elements, if you want to remove an elements, if you want to search for an element, if you want to arrange the elements in a specific order, then everything we can do just with the help of some ready-made methods. So as part of this holistic class, we have some group of ready-made methods available through those methods we can manage the elements inside your list collection. But all the methods are instance methods. Instance methods means what? Instance methods in the sense? Instance yeah, methods, static methods. Static methods, how can we access? Hmm, static methods. We using? Class. Through class name. Now, how to invoke that static method? Object no. Hmm. Class name dot That's method name. name. That's it. It may be procedure or function, whatever. Static methods can be accessible with the help of class name dot method name. It doesn't require any object. Instance methods requires object of the class. We have to create the object of the class. We have to access the method by using object name dot method name. So now as part of this collection classes, these are providing some ready-made methods which are purely okay, instance methods. Every collection requires an object. Based on the object only, we can access those ready-made methods to perform the operations on your collection elements. Okay, clear? Now, let's see. Make a note of this one. List collection.
list is an ordered collection ordered collection ordered collection which allows us to store a collection of both homogeneous and heterogeneous elements listic collection preserves the insertion order listic collection preserves the insertion order that is the elements will be available in the collection in the same order in which they were inserted in which they were inserted listic collection allows us to store the elements of type primitive type a yes, subject type collection type apex type and use the different types of elements and use the different types of elements list collection allocates the unique identification number for each element called as index position which always starts from zero which always starts from zero listic collection supports dynamic memory allocation hence the collection size can grow or shrink at any time so that we can avoid the memory wastage so that we can avoid the memory wastage listic collection supports to store duplicate elements also duplicate elements also now it provides the collection of instance methods which can be used to manage the elements inside the collection it provides a collection of instance methods which can be used to manage the elements inside the collection then how can we define this listic collection class object now let's see the syntax list of data type we can specify the object name that means reference name equals to new list of data type i'm creating the object of the class create the object of this listic class by using this object we can able to access each and every method and we can manage the elements inside our collection
Sir, is there any drawbacks using collection? No. Okay. Duplication is a drawback only, right? No, it will support because in some cases we need to fix duplicates also. Done? Now, let's see. Upon creating the object of the list collection, because list is purely an ordered collection, that too it is offering a collection of instance methods. Instance methods means what? In order to access that method, we require an instance. That means object of the class. So, we have to prepare the object of this class. Upon preparing the object of the class, we have to use the class name and then specify the data type. Specify your object name with what name you want to create the object of the class equals to new and we can specify the default constructor. Now here you can raise a question. Sir, why we need to specify list of data type here? Now, as of now, List collection allows us to store both homogeneous elements, heterogeneous elements, both. But now, my requirement is I want a list collection which can store only integer elements. I don't want to store other data type elements, only integer elements I want to store in my list collection. In some cases, I want a list collection which can store only string elements, other elements you should not accept. In some cases, I want a list collection which can store only account records, not other object records. In this case, depends upon our application requirement, we can define that list collection with the respect to data type. So according to your convenience, we can able to prepare the list collection okay, with the respect to data type to indicate what type of data this list collection class can hold inside this. Okay? Now, even though list will be supporting to store heterogeneous elements also, there is a possibility to restrict the list collection to store only some same data type elements as well. For that reason, we are using list of data type. Okay, now let's see. For example, now I have some customer codes are available with me. Customer codes are purely numerical values. Now I want to store all these customer codes inside my collection. Now tell me what type of collection that we need to prepare. Hmm. List of what? Integer. List of integer. I'm giving the collection name as customer codes. Equals to new list of integer. So now list of integer. I'm giving the collection name 
equals to new list of empty cells. That means what? Customer codes is nothing but a collection. This is the list collection which can store a group of integer elements here. It will store only integer elements. Remaining data type elements it won't support here. Okay. Now, next one. I'm indicating this. It holds. A collection of integer elements. I'm defining a list collection to store some country names. Now list of string. I'm indicating country names equals to new list of string. In this case, this collection holds a collection of string elements. I want to store the record IDs. I want to store record IDs so that we can specify list of ID. Record ID is equals to new list of ID. Now, it, this collection can hold a collection of record IDs. Now, I want to store some account records. So I'm defining list of account. Each element is nothing but a record. What record? Account record. Now, I'm indicating LST account equals to new list of account now this collection can store a group of account records it holds a collection of account records list of opportunity i'm indicating lst opt equals to new list of opportunity now this collection can hold a collection of opportunity records i want to store my position records list of position underscore underscore c LST position equals to new list of position underscore underscore C. Now it can store only position records. Holds a collection of position records. This is how we can define your list collection. Even though the list collection is having the capability to store both homogeneous and the heterogeneous elements regarding your requirement. Based on your application requirement, we can indicate what type of elements that we can store inside the list collection. Whether the list collection can store only same data type elements or different data type elements that we can decide. Roll on what is the limit of storage memory storage no, no limitation umb max
done now here you can raise a question sir you said that listic collection will allow us to store homogeneous heterogeneous also but as of now what are the listic collections we have defined these are purely homogeneous that means this cell customer codes will store only integers it will store only string values it will store only ids it will store only account records it will store only position records then how to store different types of elements so that here now let's see in this case we can do list of object list of object so now i think you are aware of this data type object where we have discussed primitive data types during primitive data types we have discussed about a data type called as object which is a generic data type which can store any type of value inside this so list of object means what list of a collection of heterogeneous primitive elements we can store inside this collection that means list of object means what one element integer one element string two elements date three elements boolean five elements id like that we can store a group of heterogeneous elements but primitive type not okay yes subject types over here because object is comes under primitive data type so list of object means it allows us to store a group of primitive heterogeneous elements inside your list collection okay now i'm indicating lst elements equals to new list of object it holds a collection of primitive heterogeneous elements it holds a collection of primitive heterogeneous elements now in some cases i want to prepare a list collection which can store multiple object records one account record three contact records four opportunity record two late recollect case records one position record three candidate records i want to mix all these records into a single collection at that time we can specify list of yes subject right exactly yes subject lst records equals to new list of yes subject now this collection holds a collection of yes subject sorry heterogeneous the subject elements this is how we need to define list collection depends upon your application requirement what are the elements you are going to store based on those elements type we can prepare your own list collection by giving the respect to data type list of data type and we can specify the object name equals to new and then constructor of that default class sir a subject means only standard or any sort of subject no no anything so a subject means it's a combination of both standard and custom done now next one so now as part of this list collection can we store collection type of elements inside this yes collection type means what as of now we know a list collection inside this list collection can i store another list collection yes like that how many levels you can store up to five levels up to five levels as part of this list collection list collection supports to store the nested list collections up to five levels that is a maximum limitation given by salesforce here 
it's a common question in every interview and in pd1 certification also common question so how many levels of holistic collections will be getting supported in apex it will support maximum of five levels that means in the list collection in the first list we can add second one in that one third list in that one fourth list in that one fifth list maximum five levels will be getting supported now let's see make a note of this one list collection supports nested list collections up to maximum of five levels i'm adding list of list of list of list of list now it will support nested list collections up to five levels max just to make a note of this one i will be back within a minute
let's see so as part of this listic collection we have to define the listic collection by using this syntax and upon defining the listic collection we have to specify the data type which indicates what type of elements the collection can store inside this now so upon storing those elements we can store another listic collection also up to maximum of five levels that means inside a listic collection we can store another list that means what that list will be treating as one element but internally it is having some group of elements internally so that we can store more number of elements inside a single listic collection itself that's what listic collection can store a group of elements where each element can be in another listic collection also here okay now so now here in this case once the listic collection has been defined then how can we manage the elements what methods are available as part of this listic collection now let's see one by one let's see the methods sir now yeah tell me. here all the net nested list should be of the same data type right same data type okay it won't support all the same data. data type here it should not be different data types here inside the list we can't store set then so all will be list data type only here then this won't okay. support heterogeneous data type right now because the remaining elements are heterogeneous but okay. this will be same type over here now so once the list collection has been defined with the respect to data type how to main is the elements inside this collection what are the various ready made methods that we have as part of this list collection now let's see one by one now for example i want to store a group of string elements inside my list collection i want to store a group of string elements so that i am preparing a list collection which can store the string type of elements inside that so i'm defining a collection list of string i'm indicating some lst elements equals to new list of string now tell me do we have any elements inside this collection now no just now i have defined the collection over here i haven't stored any elements in the collection as of now so the collection is empty so this is an empty collection which it doesn't have any elements inside this so now once the collection has been defined how to manage the elements i want to add some elements to my collection in order to add the elements we have a method called as add method add of element name add of element name so now what is the use of this add method add method is used to add a new element to your list collection in order to add a new element to the list collection we are using the help of add method now let's see for example here so this is my collection object name and then these methods are instance methods these methods are instance methods which can be accessible by using object name dot method name here okay now let's see then how can we add the elements now let me explain now make a note of this one this method is used to add a new element to the collection then how can we add lst elements dot add of i'm adding an element with the name some apex apex is a string element so string elements will be always enclosed with single quote lst elements dot add i'm adding the element some hyderabad lst elements dot add of some welcome lst elements dot add of i'm indicating some bangalore lst elements dot 
add off i'm indicating some australia so these are the various elements that we have added to my collection whenever i'm adding the elements to the collection what will happen these elements will be placed inside my collection in the same order or in a different order same order so what are the elements that we have placed those elements will be placing inside my collection in the same order over here like it will be have the elements apex first and then hyderabad and then welcome and then bangalore and then australia so these are the elements will be available all these elements are available each element will be having the index position starting from 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 and the four this is how it is managing the elements inside your list collection internally by default as soon as whenever i am adding this five elements to the collection this is how the elements will be getting arranged it will be having this suffix element first and then hyderabad and then welcome and then bangalore and then astil whatever the order we have added the elements in the same order elements will be available to your collection then now the second method now in this case you can raise a question sir as of now we have added the elements one by one one by one one by one but what this add method will do generally this add method is going to be adding this element at the end of the collection so now as of now initially the collection is empty nothing is available so apex is the first element here then whenever i'm adding one more element hyderabad this element will be adding at the end of the collection as of now we have only apex element now it is adding one more element that is hyderabad then i'm adding the third element to welcome it will be adding at the end of the collection and then i'm adding bangalore it will add at the end of the collection and then australia it will add at the end of the collection so normal add method will be adding the element at the end of the collection but in some cases i want to insert an element in this index position 2 at the index position 2 i want to insert an element here whenever i am inserting the element at the index position 2 but already in the index position 2 there is an element is available welcome then what about this element it should be escalated to next level that means it has, should be moved to third position third element should go move to that fourth position fourth element should move to that fifth position automatically it should be adjusted over here. so it will not be removing that element element will be available that will be escalating to the next level automatically by default now i am not adding the element at the end of the list i am inserting the element in the middle of the position at the middle position i am inserting an element at the index position 1 also 2 also 3 also wherever you want we can insert that element then in this case how to insert upon inserting the elements to the collection we have to indicate at which index position you want to insert specify the index position and then what element you want to insert element name two parameters we have to pass one will be integer type second one will be string type first one is going to be indicating index position of that element where you want to insert second one string type of element which indicates what element you would like to insert inside your collection so that we are having one more method called as add method here also add add of index position 
कामा एलिमेंट नहीं है नाउ दिस इज नथिंग बट पॉलीमार्फिजम कॉन्सेप्ट हियर आल्सो एड हियर आल्सो एड हियर वन पैरामीटर हियर टू पैरामीटर्स ही नाउ दिस मेथड विल इंसर्ट द स्पेसिफाइड एलिमेंट in the collection at the specified index position this method will insert the specified element in the collection at the specified index position now i want to use that lst elements dot add at the index position 2 i want to insert an element with the name some india whenever i am inserting the element with the name india in the index position 2 the elements will be arranging like this just by looking into the picture we can understand very easily that's what i am giving the pictorial format in the index position 2 it will add the element india so india will be at the second position welcome will be at the third position bangalore will be at the fourth position and then rtla will move forward to that fifth position automatically this is the way next method add all so what is this add all method now as of now we have added single single elements to my collection one by one one by one one by one by using a separate add method but now i want to add a group of elements to my collection in one shot at a time i want to add a group of elements here then how can we add a group of elements to your collection in one shot for that one we have a method called as add all add all method is used to add a group of elements to the collection at a time then what we need to do whatever the elements you want to add place those elements inside an array or inside the collection prepare an array in the array specify all the elements which you would like to add to your collection and then copy all the elements from the array and then place inside your collection at a time by using add all method now let's see how can we add a group of elements at a time now let's see this method will add a group of elements to the list collection at a time in this case i'm preparing your string array string array some country names equals to new string array here i'm placing some country names like as usa uk and then some japan these are the three elements i have placed i have a string array which contains the three country names are available usa uk and the japan these three elements i want to add into my list collection at a time how can we do that now let's see lst elements dot add all just to can specify that collection name or array name where exactly the elements are available so lst elements dot your collection object name dot add all and then specify that array name 
that means please go to this array collect all the elements and add all those elements to my list collection at the end of that collection so then what it will do what are the elements available inside my collection to this elements it will be adding this new elements also it will add this elements also now at the end of the collection it will add usa uk japan these are the elements will be getting added here all these three elements will be getting added at a time it will be having the index position 6 this will have the index position 7 it will have 8 these are the elements will be available so not only adding one element we can add a collection of elements also to this collection in one shot next one integer size method integer size method so what do you mean by this size method what did you understood with this one somewhere we have used this method also hmm. where we have used this method size yes arrays right yes, yes. in arrays also we have used this method now tell me what this method will do now size of the array but now what is this one collection now what is the collection size that we can fetch with the help of size method now what this size method will do size method is going to be returning an integer value now tell me is it a procedure or a function function, function. how do you know function it returns a value so size is a method which returns integer value that means it is returning a value whenever if the method is returning a value then it is procedure or function function simple concept so size is a function which returns an integer value which indicates how many number of elements available inside my collection in order to know the collection size that means size means not the memory size the elements size how many elements are available it will return now for this collection how many elements are available now nine elements here index will be starting from zero count will be starting from one onwards here. okay so we have nine elements are available in the collection to get that collection size that means the number of elements count we are using the help of size method now it returns an integer element which describes the number of elements in the collection i want to indicate system dot debug collection size we can show the collection size lst elements dot size lst elements dot size next one boolean is empty then what do you mean by this method is it procedure or function function now what it returns true or false then when it will returns true what is the functionality of this method now is empty means what what did you do understood with this word is empty if the element is empty hmm. list contains elements or now now to check whether a collection is empty or not 
in order to check whether the collection is empty or not. That means whether collection contains some elements or is it empty collection. To know that we are using is empty method here. If the collection is empty, it returns true. Or else it returns false. Okay. So now in order to check that whether the collection collect contains some elements or not, we are using this is empty. It returns true. If the collection contains, collection is empty. Else, it returns false. Then how can we write this piece of code? Just we can use that if condition. I'm indicating if condition. If LST elements dot is empty. That means if the collection is empty, that means true. If the condition is true, then I want to show the message here system dot debug collection is empty else i want to show the message collection is not empty collection is not empty so in order to know whether the collection is empty or not we are using the help of this is empty method Done. Next. Next method. Get method. What do you do understood with this name get? Hmm? To retrieve the values, right? Based on what? Index position. Index position. So get of index position. Just by looking into the method itself, we should be able to understand the functionality. Get of index position means what? This method is used to get the element value based on the index position. If I am passing the index position 2, it should return the value India. If I am passing 4, <coughs> it should return Bangalore. If I am passing 5, okay, it returns Australia. So, depends upon the index position which we have supplied, it returns that element value automatically here. Now. This method returns a value that means element value based on the specified index position. For example, if I am using LST elements dot get of some file, whenever I am using this get of file, it returns output here. What is the element value at the index position 5? Australia. Next. Remove of index position. That means what? Hmm. To remove the element based on what? Index position. Whenever if you want to remove any element from that list collection, just we can use the help of remove method and pass the index position. 
what are the index position that were supplied based on the index position the corresponding element will be removing from your collection automatically by default now it will remove the element from the collection based on the specified index position lst elements dot remove of 4 i am removing the element 4 so now after removing this one how the collection will look like now let me explain this is the actual collection which is having some elements i am removing the element based on the index position 4 so this is the index position 4 we have the element bangalore bangalore will be getting removed and the remaining element australia will be coming into the fourth location usa will be coming into the fifth location uk will come into that sixth location and the japan will come to that seventh location here the remaining indexes will be getting eliminated that's it upon reading this information just you can look into the picture so that you can understand very easy Next method, contains method, which returns a Boolean value. Now tell me what do you mean by this contains method? What did you understood with this word contains? Contains to in check the sense- whether a value hmm. is there in the list or right. not. Now, basically contains method is for what? to check whether the collection contains this element or not that means whether the collection is having this element or not that means we are searching for the element we need to search whether a specific element is exist in the collection or not we are using contains method if the element is available in the collection it returns true or else it returns false so to check the element is exist in the collection or not we are using this contains method now it returns true if the collection contains the specified element else it returns false i want to check if lst elements dot contains lst elements dot contains i am indicating this element like as with the name some japan if the element is found that means it returns true that means if the collection is having this element japan it returns true that means if the condition is true then i want to show the message system dot debug element found in the collection else system dot debug element not found in the collection so in order to know whether the element is exist in the collection or not we are using this method Next method, index of methods are very, very important. If you remember the list collection methods, okay, list set collection, map collections are also having almost same kind of methods. Just to refer these notes once, okay, once you go to your home today.
So now tell me, what do you mean by this method index of? Here I'm passing element name. Now, in some cases, I know an element name. Now I want to check whether this element is available in which index position in my collection I want to know. Okay, I know an element name. Now I want to check in which index position this element is available. I want to know that. So to get the index position of an element based on the element name, we can able to use the help of this index of method. So index of method is going to be returning the index position of the element based on the name. Now, here some multiple scenarios came into the picture. If I'm getting the element index position of, for example, some India, what it will return to? If I'm giving this index position of the element some USA, then five. It returns a value five. Suppose assume that this welcome is available here, India is available here also, here also. Now, if I'm searching for the element index position of India, what it returns now? Two, oh, sir. It will return both two and seven? Yeah. No. Only seven. Hmm. seven. First occurrence automatically. So, if the element is a duplicate element, okay, if the element is a duplicate element, whenever it is searching the element from the first place, wherever it is founding this element at the first time, that first occurrence element index position will be getting returned automatically by default. Here. Okay. If the element is a duplicate element, so whatever the first occurrence inside that collection, that first occurrence element in this position will be getting returned. Clear? Now, suppose I'm searching for the index position of the element China. Now, in this case, what will happen? I'm searching for the element index position of China. Do we have any element in the collection China? No. Then what it will return? None. Exception. No, what it will do? None. In this case, this index method will be returning the value minus one. That means what here? It won't return zero because index is already starting from zero. So that it returns a negative value. That means minus one. If the element found in the collection, it returns that element index position. If the element is a duplicate element, it returns the first occurrence index position of that element. If the element is not found, it returns a negative value automatically. These are the three cases are available. This question is very, very important in the entry point of view here. Okay? Clear? Now, let's see. Now, it returns the index position of the specified element in the collection. For example, I'm using LST elements dot index of, I'm giving this option some Australia. It returns the output value as four. If I'm indicating LST elements dot index of some India, it returns a value. What is index position two? If I'm indicating LST elements dot index of some China, it returns a value minus one that means a negative value next one set method index position element value set method
what this set method will do now setting in the sense assigning okay assigning now whenever if you want to assign a new value for the element based on the index see i am having this element okay with the name some usa which is available at the index position 5 now what i want to do is instead of showing like as some usa i want to replace this value with united states so whenever if you want to update the element value if you want to assign a new value for that element if you want to replace the element value then we are using the help of this set method set means setting that means we are assigning we are replacing that here element is already there it is having some value but now i want to replace that value with a new value over here so for that one we are using set method this method will replace the element value by assigning the new value based on the specified index position for example lst elements dot set i want to indicate the index position for example for the index position 5 i want to assign the value united states united states so the value will be getting replaced over here Done? Now, next one, sort method. What do you mean by this sort method now? Right, arranging the elements in alphabetical order. That means ascending format, A to Z, or minimum to maximum, we can arrange the elements. Whenever if you want to arrange the elements in a sorting order, that means alphabetical order from A to Z format, we can use the help of sort method. Sometimes you can raise the question, sir, I want to arrange the elements in reverse format, like Z to A format I want to arrange. We don't have any ready-made methods to arrange the elements in reverse format. If you want, then what can I do? I want to represent the elements in descending format. What can I do? Okay, then how, how can we do it? Hmm. What is your approach? How to do that? Give me some steps. Sort method will arrange in ascending order, but I want in descending format. How? Simple, straightforward. Hmm. By passing negative value. Hmm. Then how? Right. In this case, what we can do is we use that sort method initially, sort the elements in alphabetical order. Once the elements has been sorted in alphabetical order, then by using a for loop, iterate the collection from last to first. 
you know how to iterate the elements from first to last last to first already we know as part of paris concept we have discussed same thing we can do here also because we don't have any reverse method there is no specific method to arrange the elements in descending format so that arrange the elements in alphabetical order by using sort method once the collection has been sorted then we can print the elements from last to two first by using normal for loop because enhanced for loop won't support in this case enhanced for loop will be always printing the elements from starting to ending but now i want from ending to starting here so use normal for loop that already told you during our for loop concept and the enhanced for loop concept during arrays i told you how to do that one here the same process we have to follow here also okay now let's see this method will arrange the elements in alphabetical order alphabetical order for example lst elements dot sort next one next method is clone what do you mean by this clone method copy right cloning in the sense creating one more copy of that collection so already i have a list collection now i want one more copy of that list collection again so that we can use the help of clone method which will be copying the elements from that collection to your target collection automatically here okay now let's see it will create a duplicate copy of the collection for example lst elements dot clone which will create a copy that copy we can store list of string i am indicating backup copy i am creating a collection over here list of string why i am preparing one list of string it is creating a copy over here this is the collection which it will copy this is what lst elements is what list collection list of what string elements so i am creating a copy that uh, new elements copied elements should be placed inside my backup copy collection over here now you know this method equals what this equals method will do binary comparison of what upon this is what words. collection hmm. now here i'm passing one more collection suppose i have two list collections are available with me now i want to compare whether both the collections are same or different both the collections are holding same elements or different elements i want to compare so that here in order to check whether two list collections are equals or not we can use the help of this equals method if both the list collections are equals it returns true or else it will returns false okay now it returns true if both the list collections are identical else it returns false now we can check the functionality like if lst elements dot equals of we can specify the target list collection both should be list collections okay don't pass array don't pass set because list is different set is different 
we can't compare. If both are equal, it returns true. If the condition is true, it will be execute that immediate block. So both the collections are identical. Else, system dot debug. Both the collections are different. Both the collections are different. Last one. Clear. Last method, clear. What do you mean by this clear method? Hmm. To remove all the elements, that's it, simple. Remove method is used to remove only one element. If you want to remove all the elements from the collection, we can use the help of clear method, which will clear out all the elements from the collection. It will remove all the elements from the collection. It will remove all the elements from the collection. This is the way. These are the total 14 methods are available inside my list collection class, which are very, very important. Then how to use this list collection methods, how to manage the elements. Okay, I will show you with the practical in tomorrow's session. And along with that, tomorrow we'll see the concept of set collection also what exactly set collection we'll see that one practically and then we are going to discuss about a concept called as bulkification mechanism or bulkify process what is bulkification what is bulkify process we'll see in tomorrow's session okay tomorrow we have the session at 11 o'clock okay okay tomorrow we have the session at 11 o'clock not 10 11 o'clock only for tomorrow from day after tomorrow normal 10 o'clock here we'll be having this because tomorrow we have another meeting here at morning nine o'clock. So we'll be having our session by 11 o'clock tomorrow. Okay. I will post this message in our WhatsApp group also. So please be available tomorrow for 11 o'clock, only for tomorrow. After that, we'll have it 10 o'clock normal. Sir, can you scroll up for fifth one and second one? Thank you. Sir, can you please scroll up? I'm sharing the notes into the WhatsApp group, Madam, right away. Excuse me, sir. Sir, in Saturday.